everybody, it's Dandruff with your news cartridge for Wednesday, November 2nd, 2016. I got a comment that yesterday's show was a bit angrier than normal. However, I call it passion, but just know that I do have a lot of fun while doing this show, and between most of the bad takes, I was laughing my butt off. Oh, which reminds me, would you guys like to see a blooper video during my break coming up between the 14th and the 18th? Let me know down below. Alright, enough babbling, let's get on to the news, and today begins with Animal Crossing being the subject of today's Nintendo Direct. The game New Leaf will be adding amiibo support and to update you about the voice actor strike currently underway there are plans to pick it in front of warner brothers offices later this week sony is offering a free copy of call of duty infinite warfare with the purchase of a ps4 on november 4th and 5th bohemia interactive has announced two new projects one called project argo which is essentially a 5v5 squad based game with using armor 3 as a foundation and y lands is a sandbox game about exploring a desert both look really cool the developer of Journey has teased their new game with a few ambiguous tweets. Somebody over there really likes Teal. And Sony has shown off The Last of Us on the PS4 Pro using HDR support. And you can check out the comparison pictures in a link in the description down below, as well as links for sources for all of today's stories. And then EA says they could delay Mass Effect Andromeda by up to five months if they so desire. Because they have the money to do so. Huh. Is that a threat, EA? Are you threatening us? Oh, oh, it's to make the game better. Wait, are you threatening us with making the game better? Moving on to release announcements, which is for Star Wars Battlefront 2, coming possibly in March of 2018. Hmm. Yeah, pretty sure that one came out in 2005, EA. Moving on, House of the Dying Sun has left early access. Final Fantasy Legends 2 is getting released for Android and iOS, but currently only in Japan. If you pre-ordered Pokemon Sun and Moon, you can now preload it and prepare for its release on November 18th. The Sims 4 City Living DLC is now out, and you can pick it up on Origin for 40 US dollars, 30 British pounds, or your regional equivalent. Finally for teasers... Maze, the game about sentient talking corn, has a release date of December 1st and a new trailer out which leaves you with even more questions. Valve is changing Steam's policies yet again, and it's inspired by a rather infamous game. Find out coming up later on today's news cartridge. Today's big news is the leak of the Japanese operatives for Rainbow Six Siege coming later this month. In what Ubisoft have dubbed Operation Red Crow, we will see official information about the ops later this week, but we do have their names, Echo and Ibana and their pictures to go off of. It's pretty clear Echo will use a flying drone, which could either be purely reconnaissance or possibly have offensive capability, much like Twitch's shock drone. Hibana is packing some pretty big firepower in the form of a massive rifle, but if you look closely, you can see two canisters on the side indicating she may fire some type of sticky substance or possibly even shoot at doorways to create walls. Stay tuned to News Cartridge later this week for coverage of the official reveal, and do you play Rainbow Six Siege, let me know what you think these operative special abilities may be in the comment section down below. Up next is a move by Valve which is a little drastic but hopefully will lead to an overall better marketplace and still has a couple of questions left unanswered. Valve will now require screenshots and screenshots alone for their store page, meaning no hand-drawn artwork or concept art can be used to sell your game. Many people point to No Man's Sky for being the cause of this, and I think that is fair to say, but not all of the blame is to be placed on No Man's Sky. Don't forget shitty developers like Digital Homicide still exist. And then there are the good games that have massive art budgets which they used to draw in people, and that's no fault of theirs, that's really a good thing. Valve has used their own Dota 2 as an example of the latter, which will have its Steam page changed when these rules are implemented. Now, in-game screenshots can mean a few different things. For example, the trailer on the Steam page for DayZ has a character using a chainsaw, and this is way before chainsaws were a permanent part of the game. And then there's the subject of pre-rendered in-game footage. It's pretty clear purely pre-rendered images won't be allowed, but what about things like the trailer for Battlefield 1, which is all in-engine, but pre-rendered? These questions aside, this is a step in the right direction to give customers more accurate information to better guide their purchases. 
In the quick spot today, Microsoft has announced their Project Scorpio console will be backwards compatible with all Xbox 360 games available on the Xbox One. Now, this story could stop there, but I think this is going to be a trend in how console gaming will go into the future. Multiple console iterations will be released under the same name, and it won't matter what system you're playing on. It'll be an Xbox, it'll be a PlayStation, or it'll be a Nintendo. This is one advantage PC gamers and some past Nintendo consoles, mostly handhelds, have had for a long time, and now Xbox gamers are starting starting to enjoy. Sony should really pay attention to this one because I think this will be what determines who buys the next full console cycle. How important is backwards compatibility to you? Let me know in the comment section down below. Finally today, EA has talked about Titanfall 2 not having a season pass, having free DLC, and why they released Battlefield 1 and Titanfall 2 within a week of each other. It would seem EA is aware they're trying to build a franchise with Titanfall 2, and the best way to do it is to make people feel as included as possible. EA hopes to support the franchise for quite some time, and it seems like they're pulling out all of the stops, including their old DLC them to death ways. I will quite agree with them in their method and their reasoning, because doing exactly what they've done is the best chance they have at not only keeping Titanfall alive, but having it grow. The only problem is you can do everything right and still have it fail, but I do wish them the best of luck and hope that this translates over to other games. Which is where we come to the release schedule of Titanfall and Battlefield. EA says that they have three different types of players for their demographic. One who like grand scale combat of Battlefield, those who like the individualized combat of Titanfall, and the players who need to buy both. I am shocked, shocked I tell you, that EA has gained some kind of self-awareness. Once they fix that whole Iran and Myanmar situation, they could be one of the best publishers of the year. That is still really weird to say. You asked for it, so here it is. Tomorrow's game releases. For PC, Another Brick in the Mall, Heroes of Issachar, VR The Diner Duo, Battle Islands Commanders, Citalis, Xanadu Next, City Car Driving, Meow Zhong, Moto Razor 4, Kokurase Episode 1, Mega Rats, and Anime Studio Simulator. For Nintendo Wii U, Twisted Fusion, Pinball Breakout, and Gravity Plus. For Nintendo 3DS, Ice Station Z. Thank you very much, everybody. This has been News Cartridge. I am Dandruff. I will see you tomorrow. And I mailed you this joke from 12 miles away at 43,200 miles an hour. It'll take you a second to get it.